be making the squad. What's good? It's your boy Cheese Producer. Basically, what I've heard over the last few days is that you cannot open up Beatmaker 2 files in Beatmaker 3. So today I'm going to show you how to do it. It's not really that difficult. A few things that you have to do when it comes to the keyboard presets, drum presets are just fine. Session files, however, will not open up. After that, I'm going to show you how to use Beatmaker 2 as a multi timbral sound module in Beatmaker 3. So basically, um, this is a quick history lesson. I don't know how long people have been making beats, but when I started making beats, you had your drum machine, like your MPC or whatever, and then you would have like your sound module. So uh, if you think back to something like a Proteus 2000 or a Roland Phantom, they had a sound module called Triton, they also had a, like a rack mount version. Or if you had a keyboard that, had, that could basically receive MIDI on more than one channel, you could use it as a sound module. So, Beatmaker 2 is able to receive MIDI on more than one channel, so you can use that as a sound module as well. This technique can be used with Gadget, probably with Sample Tech. I haven't tried it with Sample Tech yet, and I'm, I'm guessing with the uh, BS16i. Anyway, it's a dope technique to use. I'm gonna show you how to do it, and we're gonna get it done. All right. So let's start in the files. Okay, I have some Beatmaker 2 files in here. First, I have a drum bank. As you can see, it says drum program that BMK2. Let me bring it closer. I will. Oh no, that goes out of focus. There you go. You see it? BMK2. I'm gonna select that. Low bank. Okay, bank is loaded. Here we are in bank A. That is a Beatmaker 2 file loaded up in Beatmaker 3. Like that. Okay. Now you're saying, oh, but the keyboard files don't work. If you say so, here's one right here. This is a sub bass I made. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually load a new bank. Okay. And I'm going to drag this one in wherever. Okay. There's a sub bass. Now, I understand why you think it doesn't work because at first you're not hearing anything. I'm going to show you exactly how to make that work. Okay, let's go into the, the editor page. Go to sampler. There is my wave. Okay, look at that amplitude envelope. Okay, it's up like a pad. Let's take that and bring that down. Okay, now look where it says sample, uh, sample loop. It's not loop, so let's loop that forward. All right now, let's bring this. Now, this is a sub, so this pad note, let's bring that down uh, to about you know zeros I think oh my look at that now I know you got to do a little bit of reconfiguring your sandwich cheese uh, it doesn't really work like exactly okay all right that's cool so I'm gonna show you something else that you could do instead if you still not really rocking with it all right so First. let's open up a plugin right here in app audio let's open up beatmaker 2 okay now watch what I'm going to do here. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy that pad. I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to paste it here as well. Okay, you can paste it as many times as you want to. Okay, so um, in order to go back to, in order to go to Beatmaker 2, you have to go to the original pad that you loaded it on. So the first pad I loaded on was, was pad 2. So I'm going to go here, press that. That'll take us to Beatmaker 2. Okay, let me unsolo that. So in Beatmaker 2, I have a couple of sounds already set up. Okay, I have a trumpet, um, some strings, and a drum kit. Okay, so let's go back to the trumpet. I want you to see how I have the MIDI set up. For this one, I have it set up. The trumpet is on channel 1. Okay. The strings are on channel 2. And the drums are on channel 3. Sorry guys, one thing I did neglect to mention right here is that the MIDI is on, the MIDI input is, is turned on, but the MIDI output is turned off. The reason the MIDI output is turned off is because if this instrument is receiving a MIDI on, on channel one and outputting MIDI on channel one, then that means that MIDI that's outputted is gonna come back to it and it's gonna 
make a like a feedback loop. And when I first did it, it made like all types of crazy noises. So when you set up your MIDI, make sure you have the output set to off or, or to note out to output to no channels. All right, let's get back to it. All right. So let's go back to Beatmaker 3. Okay. So now in this this pad and pad two right here, I'm gonna actually change the color so it'll be a little easier to see. So I'll make this one blue and I'll make this one a yellow. This one orange or red or whatever color it is. Alright. So on the blue pad, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the three buttons and go to MIDI setup. And the MIDI setup. We're going to hit port. I'm going to choose Beat Maker 2. And the channel I'm going to choose is 1. Okay. Now on the yellow channel, or yellow pad, I should say, MIDI setup, port, Beat Maker 2, channel, oh no, channel 2 for this one. Okay. And then for this one, MIDI setup, port, Beat Maker 2 channel three okay now for this because it, the drums are on channel three i'm gonna bring the pad note uh way down to about c negative two and listen to what, oh wait sorry listen to what happens there's a kick from the, that drum kit okay the yellow was the strings and the blue was the trumpet okay so what you could potentially do now is uh, create a sequence. So I'll do just that. All right, and you, you guys can hear the baby in the hallway going crazy. All right, so let's go to the keyboard. Sent, I mean, a uh, keyboard, and I'm just gonna play something really whack. As you can hear, the quantize is very much on. I'm sorry if that bothers you, but this is just for demonstration purposes only. Wait a minute. Is that the strings? Oh, it was, it was, it was. Okay, let's just undo that. Actually, I want that lower. I want them lower. Yeah. Let's go to this one, and uh, for this one, I'm actually going to choose the keys. Okay, got a snare there, kick there. All right, let's get it. <laughs> there you go, wackest beat you ever heard in your life. Now, if we want to turn this into, um, if we want to turn this into audio. Here's where things get interesting. First, let me say, because my Beat Maker 3 uh, likes to crash. You know, it just be out here just driving, you know, with his eyes closed. All right. So, I'm in the mixer screen here. I'm going to hit Add Track, Audio Track, one time for the trumpet, one time for the strings. And I know normally I would separate the kick and the snare, but I'm just going to do, I'm going to do them both on the same track. Uh, just like I said for demonstration purposes only first off uh, we have to go ahead and choose the ins and the outs the inputs and outputs okay so for track for audio one I'm just gonna choose internal uh, was it it was the sub right yeah so uh, beat maker two all right and I'm not sure but I always just choose the original pad because uh, I don't know if the audio is coming through all of them so beat maker two okay but i know for one thing you uh when you go back into beat maker two which we we're about to do now what we have to do uh, we have to do is go into the the uh the mixer and we have to solo the track out that we want to record so i'm going to solo out the trumpets okay and i'm going to come back over here sequencer i'm going to uh arm that track and we're going to record and cut the loop, loop off Okay. As you can 
can see, uh, let me choose this. As you can see, trumpets have been recorded in. Okay, so now let's disarm that track and let's on the second track, go back into Beat Maker 2, solo track 2, and okay let's take a look here as you can see the strings have been recorded okay and let's go back audio three uh it's going to beat maker two okay solo that um now easy way you could uh, solo out your drums, okay, because I have this one and that one going, like, I could just literally just go in here and just, like, if I just want the snare for right now, I'll just turn the, the, the volume on the kick all the way down, okay, and then I'm just going to record that track in. Okay, as you can see, the snares have been recorded in. All right, okay. So let me get one more audio track here. Actually, let me save, because, no, no, cancel, cancel. Save, yeah, just save that session for me. Don't need you crushing on me, baby. Uh, let's go back to the mixer. Let's add a track, audio track, there we go. Over here, input, internal, sub, Beat maker 2. Okay, and let's go back to the sequencer. Turn that one off, turn this one on. Let's go back and beat maker 2. I know this may seem like quite involved, but I don't know. When I make beats, I don't care about stuff like this. Like, this is a part of the process for me. Turn that one down. And, oh, duh, we could have just been hitting mute that whole time. <laughs> anyway. Alright, watch. And let's get the kick recording. the hell? Hello? Okay, maybe I did something wrong. Let's take a look back in the mixer section. Input 2, internal, select that, beat maker 2, okay. Uh, I don't know what happened. Okay, let's try one more time. Okay, here we go. All right, and as you can see, the kicks are there. Okay, so now let's go on this song, and here's what I'll do. I'm gonna take this pattern, and I'm gonna remove it. Okay, and just to make sure you believe it, I'm going to, yeah. All right, so as you can see, Beatmaker 2 is not, is not open anymore, and so I'm just gonna play. So as you see, you have options when it comes to getting your sounds from Beatmaker 2 into Beatmaker 3. Um, yeah, that's about it. Anyway, I'm going to get on up out of here. Uh, it's your boy Cheese Producer. It's Beatmaker's Squad, and I'm signing off. Peace.